Hallo. Um, hello. And welcome to another video. Uh, I thought I'm gonna make another episode straight away because I had a long break. And it's, it's shitty. The weather, the weather is shitty. It's a shitty day. And I'm bored. So I just thought I'm gonna make the episode on 3x oscillator straight away. Um, and we previously talked about 3x oscillator. Uh, but uh, we only briefly flew over it while making this sound. And today I um, ignore, I'm going to ignore the fact that we already talked about this and just uh, make an overview about this plugin in general. And so you will also get an overview about how synth work, synth, synthesizers work in general, because this is a very basic overview of, of how a synthesizer works, which makes it the perfect beginner plugin. Um, but also, as I'm still using it, and I wouldn't necessarily call me a beginner because I've been producing for like eight years. Um, um, so let's add an instance of three layer oscillator. And I have an idea I want to make, which is not really a sound that I've done before necessarily, but you know, it's all kind of similar. Um, but I will try to produce this sound later. What we're gonna do first is talk about what these things do, what this thing does. Yeah. So we're gonna put this in the mixer track, first of all, so it's not that loud and it goes through our master um, a little bit quieter. So, so every synthesizer consists of the same parts. You have uh, your oscillators, you have a mixer, you have a filter, you have envelopes, an LFO, and on hardware synthesizers, you all also have an amplifier. And in this case, this is just a volume knob, you know? But in general, you have oscillators. And this is the first part of the synthesizer. This is what produces your sound wave. Yeah. And these different things are wave shapes. These are shapes that the sound wave, which the oscillator produces, uh, can take on. And the shape of this wave determines the timber of the sound, which means it doesn't affect the pitch, but it affects how the tone sounds, like comparing a clarinet to a guitar, for example. These sound different, but you can play the same note with them. So for example, this is a sine wave now, um, and I'm just gonna t take oscillator three, first of all, because we're just going to work with one to start with. And I'm going to turn this on. Yeah. This is our mixer, basically. Um, and if one of these knobs is turned all the way up, the others aren't playing at all. <laughs> and in this case, this is kind of weird with this plugin, but I'm going to explain it in greater detail later. So now we have one sine wave, which just goes through on default. This is not being affected by anything else. And this is what it sounds like. It's great, right? And if we look at this in a parametric equalizer, you will see that it's just one pitch. This up here you can ignore because that's just noise because it's a digital oscillator. Um, let's make this HQ. Nope, doesn't go away. Let's also add our heat map. Yeah. In fact, let's only use our heat map. Because now you see it's just a line. This is a single pitch at around 562 hertz. I think I'm playing a C right now. I'm not sure. But this is what a sine wave is. It's one frequency. Yeah. And every other of these sh uh, wave shapes is basically a combination of sine waves in different distances frequency wise. So if you use a square wave, you can now see that there's uh, a lot of lines, you know, and these are all sine waves added together. So that this is the shape that's being created, basically. 
Um, we could also add, uh, where is wave candy? There's wave candy. Uh, can't really see it. Too bad. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna remove this again. Um, uh, maybe... Yeah, there you can see. It looks like a, a square wave when I'm not talking. When I'm talking... <laughs> okay. So yeah. Um, so combination of sound waves changes the shape of the wave, changes the sound of the note. And for example, this is just fun knowledge. Um, you can see that if you're if you have the square wave selected, then you have like a certain distance where these other sine waves appear. And if you have a saw wave, it's exactly twice as many. So there's one in between each. It's every overtone. That's basically what a saw wave is: is every overtone, which are multiples of the bass frequency which is the note you're playing. I think I'm getting too technical for a simple demonstration of 3x oscillators, but I want to explain how synthesizers work, so it's, it's, it's okay. So now we have our saw, saw wave selected, and it goes through a mixer. So we have one saw wave, and now we can go into our envelope LFO filter section. First of all, we're going to talk about the filter which basically filters out different parts of the frequency depending on the type of filter you selected. In this case, it's a low pass filter, which means if we turn this knob down, it's gonna filter out frequencies out of a signal from the top down. So if I play this note, let's enable a histogram again and disable the heat wave, you will see uh, when I turn this knob down, um, the lines from up here will disappear and slowly be removed. So it goes from the top down. Yeah. And this knob is the resonance knob, which is called mod Y in this uh, synthesizer, but it's resonance. It's called resonance everywhere else. And this is the cutoff. Yeah. Uh, if we turn this up, this basically makes the point where the frequencies are taking, being taken away sharper and it pronounces it. So I can also uh, add a high pass filter in the equalizer itself and this shows this better what it actually does. So uh, low pass, low pass, sorry. Um, you see that uh, our equalizer is now going down, so it's filtering out the frequencies just like this knob did. But this knob does it before we add any effects, so that's why this is more useful in some cases and sounds better. Um, and in this case, this is our resonance knob, and if we turn this down in this case, which is up in this case, this is a little bit complicated now, but we'll, we'll get there. Um, if you turn this down, you will see that the point where it's being cut off is getting pronounced, you know? And the line is getting more steep, and this makes it so it sounds like this. And you can hear the same sound if I do it, like, if I turn this one up. You can also see it in the spectrum. All right, so this on a lower pitch, which you can uh, set with this wheel. So 24 basically means that it's two octaves above this at the bottom, which is zero. Um, these are the 12 semitones of an octave. And also we have the a deep C, middle C and the high C um, and if we take the low one now and just do this it already sounds kind of cool <laughs> kind of you know we're not we're not there quite yet um, but then you also have these envelopes <sighs> excuse me breakfast again 
uh, which is uh, uh, which basically modulates our signal from where we put it in and until we release the key, basically. So we have the same kind of, of principle for every envelope generator and every synthesizer, basically, which is attack, decay, sustain, and release, and sometimes hold, which just holds the signal after the attack is finished for a certain amount of time. But yeah. Um, and this, what you see above here, is like uh, which parameter of our synthesizer our envelope is modulating. So we can modulate volume. So if we um, enable this envelope, now the volume will go up when I press the key. And then down again. And the release actually means that it's actually still playing when I release my key for a certain amount of time. If I turn this up and I press my key really shortly, I'm only gonna tap it now. Can hear it ringing out for a long time. Um, and yeah, so this is a, a really great way of how to, to, to change how your sound sounds, how your sound sounds, how the synthesizer or synth lead sounds you want to make. For example, if you want something that sounds a little more plucky, you can um, disable the attack, disable the hold, uh, disable the release, the sustain, and then change the decay so we have a... And yeah, let's disable the volume envelope again. Um, you can also do this with mod X, which is the filter envelope. And this is where it get kind, gets kind of interesting. Because with this alone, we can create the sound that's kind of similar to a 303. And I'm going to demonstrate that now. Uh, you turn the amount of the envelope down. That's at least the way I like to do it. And then I play with the attack. You can also put the envelope up and turn the attack down and turn the decay up. Basically, the amount means in which direction the envelope affects the signal. If you turn it left, it subtracts, so it turns the filter down. If you add, it turns the filter up, the cutoff, in this case, because we're on mod X. So let's enable this envelope and put it to our tempo, because otherwise, if we change the tempo of our project, this will sound different um, or be less long. This just syncs it with the tempo, basically. Um, and now let's turn this down and see how it sounds. Whoa. And we did, actually did the same thing when we made this baseline up here. But I'm just going to explain it again because this is a separate video and it's, it's okay. Um, and now if you turn the resonance up, you get this. And you, you hear this, if I hold the key down, you hear the sustain kicking. But that's not a problem because we're going to use short notes for the sound I want to make. So um, these, these actually all work the same. Yeah. And you also have an LFO. Okay, let's quickly talk about the LFO. Um, for this, I'm gonna disable this and go to our volume and show you what the LFO does with an LFO that affects volume. Uh, LFO stands for Low Frequency Oscillation. And this is also an oscillator, like this one, but on a very low frequency and different than these ones. This does not produce sound, but it modulates the parameter which is selected on, on top here. So in this case, this LFO can modulate our volume. And if we turn the uh, attack down, because then it instantly starts affecting the signal, this is the same way attack works in this case, only it affects the attack of the LFO itself. Um, amount is also the same as here. We're just going to turn it up. 
And now we have a sine wave in here, which, which is modulating our volume up and down in a certain speed. So if I play a note, its uh, volume is oscillating. And if I increase the speed of this, can get really cool um, sort, uh, not really effects, but you know, different ways how to change your sound. And you can also use this and then just make a really quick volume gate. You can right click the speed knob and go to set. And then you can actually sync it up to your temp, to the tempo of your project. Yeah. So if I select uh, one step, this is going to modulate up and down every step of this, which makes it sound like this. Which is kind of cool, but we can also do this with pan. So if you have headphones on, um, you will hear the signal going from left to right really quickly now, which is very, very confusing. Okay, sorry. <laughs> um, yes. Uh, back to the sound I want to design. Let's uh, enable our envelope again. Um, so yeah, this is our sound. And the idea I have for this sound is to make a polyrhythm. And we're just gonna make a polyrhythm which goes over these eight bars. Actually, I'm gonna make it 16 bars really quickly. I'm gonna cut this out. Be re be, I'm gonna be right back. Oh yeah, by the way, what I'm doing here is I'm holding control and then you can draw windows like this while holding control on your keyboard. And then if you click the notes while holding shift, you can just drag and copy. I think I never said that. Nice. Okay, we're back. So I've just increased the size of our clip here. So we not, don't have eight steps in a sequencer, but 16, which basically means I just cop copied over everything to here. Um, and now I want to make a polyrhythm, which when I'm going to finish the track, I'm actually going to be leaving running through sequences and not starting over. And what a polyrhythm basically is, is, is a different rhythm than our uh, rhythm that our track is in uh, being played on top of the rhythm our track is in. And in this case, I'm going to do uh, three over two, I think, which is if I snip it with my fingers. And my idea is that I have uh, a synthesizer before the kick drum starts in this faster rhythm. And so you expect something to kick in in that rhythm and then something slower kicks in. And this is a, an idea that has been done a lot of times by other producers. Um, a good example is Super Liminal, Liminal from Dead Mouse. I don't know why I still know that track, but that's a good example for what I'm trying to do. Um, but I'm not stealing this idea. <laughs> I'm getting inspired by it. That's the difference. Um, and uh, yeah, let's just start putting in the notes in the piano roll and see what we can do with it. And I'm just going to do this before uh, changing our synth, synth sound itself more. Yeah. So let's go ahead. Uh, our song is in the key of what again? F sharp. F sharp and a little bit pitched down. <laughs> so let's pitch it down a little bit. And let's choose an F sharp. That sounds cool. That's too deep. Okay. Okay, that's. I want to make that twice as fast actually. So this is just a 
and notes quickly going down an octave and for some reason this one is longer than this step. I have no idea why. That actually may be too fast, but let's see how it sounds in, in context. So, you know, this would be uh, the rhythm we have going on. And just by doing this, it's basically now a polyrhythm. As you can see, it now goes further. It repeats itself after three steps, while our kick repeats itself after four steps. And if we just keep going along in this pattern, uh, we now have a synthesizer that moves, or a melody that actually moves across the rhythm of our kick. So if I enable just the kick and this one, you now have this. I like that. Um, and now let's make it sound good, actually. Um, first thing I'm gonna do is, uh, first thing I'm gonna do is turn down our resonance a little bit because I think it's too much. Okay, um, let's change the sound of this because I'm not satisfied. I want to use two oscillators that make a, a square wave. Let's see how that sounds. Let's put them an octave apart and turn this down a little and this up a little because this always adds together the volumes of these two. And then the rest is this one. And if these two are turned uh, up enough, this one isn't playing. Um, and you have to guess in your head when this one is going to start playing, which is one of the drawbacks and a little bit of a weird design, um, but it works. That's cool. That's already really cool. Um, turning down the resonance a little bit. Okay. Nice. Now we're going to add a little bit of detune, which means we're gonna fine tune one of these two a little bit, which means that's, that they are now in different frequencies. And this causes a kind of dissonance and friction, which you can hear and it sounds really great, actually. So I'm um, just gonna leave it playing and turn this up a little bit so we'll, you will hear. do another thing which is this phase randomize button down here which uh, randomizes the phase 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 on your left and right side in the stereo field basically so on your left and right speakers uh, apart from each other which basically means it sounds like the sound is um, jumping from left to right and on, on two random places, basically. Uh, and this is caused because if you randomize the phase, which is the start point of the wave, basically, um, your head thinks that the sound appears earlier on the left side than your right side, for example, left ear than the right ear, which may, makes it sound like it's coming from the side. And if you randomize this, of course, it's, it's gonna jump around. I don't, don't even know if uh, no, it, it it should be it should be it should be a stereo on on YouTube, I think. Yeah. And I think this works best when it's like at forty percent. 
because then it's not that. Yes, 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 yes. I love that. I really love that. Um, also, we can detune uh, is in the stereo field, which detunes the left side from the right side. And this is actually what binaural beats are, if you know what those are, um, which is pseudoscience, but that's another video on its own. Um, but uh, if you detune your left ear from the, the left side from the right side, this makes this creates this friction, but the friction is only created in your head because the, your left ear and your right ear, they both get uh, a perfect pitch, basically. And you li if you listen to them separately, you don't get this effect. But if you turn this knob up, this actually creates, your brain creates a kind of movement in your head from this weird distortion effect. So this friction, which this fine tune knob created, is now created like in the stereo field and that's a very nice effect. It sounds like this. Um, I'm gonna disable this for now. And this. So ju ju just so you can hear better what this does, I'm gonna enable it later. But That's weird, right? So a little bit of this is always great. Makes it sound weird. Um, I tune it again and then... Nice. Um, yeah, I'm quite, quite satisfied with how this sounds. Especially with the low filter. It's kind of a weird distorted uh, acids kind of sound. But I'm gonna use another filter because there's better filter than the fast low pass in here. And my favorite one is actually this SVP LP times two. SVF, sorry. SVF, low pass times two. Which is a very aggressive, very aggressive with the resonance and it has this weird, like kind of almost like an analog filter rumble on the low part of the spectrum, which I'm gonna show you right now. It's almost like it's a kick drum. Turn this down a little bit. I always like to make my sounds a little more subtle than I think they need to be, because when I'm producing for a long time, that's sometimes the case that I have to, that I put these way too high and then it's just not fun to listen to. Yeah, that's great. Um, and what we're gonna do now is add some effects. And this is where it gets uh, really, really. What am I doing? This is where it gets. This is where it gets really, really crazy. So this is. Let's call. Let Let's name this first of all, because this is like a, a, a lead synth, I guess. This is a lead synth. This This is something which is in the. Uh, not in the background, you know, it's very pronounced, it almost is like a bass line. So I'll call this low lead. And I'll always make my leads synths green. So I'm gonna make this green as well. Also do it in this one. All right. Awesome. Um, I'm gonna add overdrive to this because I think overdrive always goes a long way. Uh, I like to use Fruity Blood, Blood Overdrive. I used to use Fruity Wave Shaper, but this actually creates some noise. And I noticed that in while making my live set because some kicks were like, had like this breathy sounds that came from nowhere, but it was actually Fruity Wave Shaper creating some weird like noise. Uh, which was only because it didn't work uh, well enough. And this is a lot more precise, so I like to use Blood Overdrive now. So let's turn this up. Maybe I want this really aggressive. You can actually, this is a, a, a thing you can literally uh, add this value times 100. 
which makes it really, really, really hard. As you can hear, that's also really loud. Let's uh, decrease the post gain. Yeah, that's quite, quite a lot. I think something like this is really cool. Holy shit! Yeah, and, and that, that's the cool thing about this SVF LP, uh, is if you add distortion, uh, it creates this really, really nice uh, rumbly noise if the cutoff, cutoff goes down which I like. And I'm actually gonna make our envelope less steep to make this. Maybe make it go up. Okay, that's, I, I think this is cool. Maybe we're gonna play with the amount. Uh, the finished track is definitely gonna have an automation clip on this one, but that's another video. Let's work on the sound now. I'm getting so distracted because I really like how it sounds. Um, but I think the distortion is too much, to be honest. I think something more subtle like this. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, and now EQing, since we already have, you know, sub bass and everything, we're gonna have to remove the sub bass from this, even though it sounds really cool. Uh, maybe we can edit in the part of the song. Uh, but for now, I'm gonna remove it. And I think I'm gonna remove it pretty steep. But I think the low mids is what will make this sound shine. So I'm gonna add, to put this at like 180 I think which makes it or a little bit lower even at like 169 and make a little bump here love it uh, and now now it's gonna start sounding really good because now we're gonna add delay and delay makes uh, like synth, synth leads and basically every sound that you add sound so much better and, and, and fuller. So I'm gonna add a stereo delay or no, I'm gonna add a ping pong delay. Um, I'm gonna decrease my time to three, which also makes, or no, I'm gonna leave it at four because <laughs> now this is actually funny. Since our synthesize synth, synth lead is in a poly rhythm that's three to zero, this actually means that it's delaying it on top of itself now. You hear that? It actually seems like there's no echo happening at all. But if if I put this back to four, we now have this pandas. maybe resonance I'm just trying around to find something I like and this really shines if you start turning this mm -hmm. 
It's amazing. <laughs> I, I, I can't believe I actually pulled off a sound like this in a tutorial because this is like one of the better ones I made, to be honest. I, I really like it. Um, and let's also try adding some reverb first, see how that sounds, but it's already really spacey. Maybe it doesn't even need it. Oh no, that's, that's cool. <laughs> Decrease it though. If you add a reverb to a sound, this is a really, really nice tip. Always use less decay and less wet. Yeah. If you think, okay, this, this, this is good. This sounds really spacey. Always decrease it because it's gonna sound, it's gonna really, really cloud up your mix. If you add big reverbs on every sound. So always decrease it. Even if you think it sounds great, decrease it. If you think, no, in this case, it really kind of, no, decrease it. Stop it. Stop it. Decrease your decay, decrease your wet and leave everything else as it is, as it is. Now this is a good, this is a good sound. But let's see how it sounds with our kick bass. It's a little loud. <laughs> Actually, I, I can't wait until this is a finished track. Like this, this it's a good lead sound that we did today, and I walked you through it. I'm really pleased with how this uh, episode turned out, um, and I think I'm actually gonna end it here because this isn't get this isn't gonna get any better. <laughs> and I think I gave you a great basic overview of three X oscillator and how to make like this sound and showing you how I work with the synthesizer, basically walking through, walking you through each step that I did on the way. And next episode, I'm just going to show you how to make more sounds with this, you know? Um, and for now, I think I just want to jam with this because I really, really like how it sounds. So, uh, actually, Actually, let's uh, copy this over to a new pattern 
uh, let's call it polyrhythm low leads. Go, go, go. <laughs> Everything's activated that needs to be activated. So let's just try this out. I'm just gonna keep this video going for a little while because I enjoy listening to this and I hope you do, maybe you do too, uh, if you got this far.
can just do it again. It's, it's great. Stop. I really need to stop. Oh my god. <laughs> so I guess that's it. I guess I hope you enjoyed this video because I, I really, really enjoyed making today's episode. And I can't wait to finish this track now, actually. And that's actually my plan how to continue this series. So I'm just gonna keep adding to this project and I'm gonna uh, keep adding to this project <laughs> until the track is finished and I'm gonna record each step of the way uh, and make an episode on what I do and uh, the last episodes are gonna look a little different because as soon as I'm uh, I am in this view I just go nuts and do what I think works and I'm not gonna be able to explain everything I do and why I do it because that's just something that you do by feeling um, uh, but I'm, I'm really curious to see how this track will turn out now, because this, this, this synth alone, I, I, I really, really like how it turned out. I think I've been, I think I said that enough, <laughs> but I really enjoy it. Um, yes. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching. See you next time. Uh, it's been real and next episode is gonna be synth pads and long drone uh, droney acid sounds how you make this with 3x oscillator so thanks for watching and see you next time <laughs>